Several years back when I was a graduate student at UCLA, at school, as you know, it's uh, intense. You have a lot of things and projects that are due. So I came home in the middle of the afternoon to our apartment to try and get caught up on a couple of things. The first thing that I noticed is that the door to our apartment is unlocked. So I cautiously uh, enter the apartment wondering if I should yell or say hello or, or grab a knife out of the kitchen or something else. And this man comes out of my bathroom uh, who I did not expect to be there. And I, I say, hey, hi, you know, I live here. What are you doing here? And the man said, oh, well, the manager let me in and he asked me to paint your bathroom. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of like not a good time for me. So to make a, a longer story short, I, I decide that I'm going to help the man for the next hour and a half and get him out of there as soon as possible so that I can do what I need to do. But as I'm there, I, I start getting a prompting from the Holy Spirit. And it, it's saying, start talking to this man about the Lord. Start talking to him about your faith. And, and you know what you believe. I started in a neutral way. I said, hey, you know, do you go to church? And he said, no, nah, I haven't been to church in years. And I said, oh, well, you know, I go to a really nice church and you know, this and that. And I start telling him uh, about Jesus and how he died for everybody's sins. And I'm asking him if, if he's ever, you know, done things that he regrets and whether he needs forgiveness in his life. So right about this point, um, he turns to me, he faces me straight on, and he yells at me. He says, why are you persecuting me? Why do you keep pushing me like this? And I said, no, it's, it's, I'm not persecuting you. I'm just sharing you what Jesus did for you and for me and everybody else. And then he looks at me and he says, you don't know me. He goes, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my history or anything. He goes, how can you say that he can forgive me? And I continued to share the gospel. I said, it doesn't matter. Jesus died for all sins, for everybody's sins. Little ones, big ones, it doesn't matter. Uh, so he, he looked at me, and I'm looking at him straight in the eye, and he starts to cry. I mean, literally weep. And this man breaks down, and he starts to just say, you know, I've done awful things in my life. He goes, I, I, I regret them. I've carried them for 20 years on my heart. And he goes, and, and they're just awful. I don't know that anybody could ever forgive me for what I've done. Uh, the man was broken. And I started to share and I said, you know what? Jesus died for all your sins. He tells us that your slate can be white as clean as snow, that your sins will be forgiven and they'll be scattered as far as east is from west. And there's nothing uh, that you've done that he can't forgive. And he said, well, how, how, how does this work? How do I do it? I said, you simply have to pray and accept Him as your Lord and Savior, recognize that you're a sinner, and ask Him into your heart. So what we did is we, um, right in the bathroom, I put my arm around him and I asked him if he wanted to pray. And he said yes. So what we did is he confessed uh, his need for Jesus. Uh, he asked Him into his heart and uh, he just experienced this, this cleansing and just wept for a while. There was nothing about this man, nothing about the timing, nothing about the circumstances that would want me uh, to share with him. Uh, the only reason I did is because of the Holy Spirit was prompting me to speak with him and he created this situation. Now what's funny is I, I never saw this man again in my life, but I heard uh, about him on two occasions. Uh, the first one was several days later, probably five days later and the manager who had contracted this gentleman to do the work at my apartment uh, came by and said, uh, what did you talk to him about? You know, what did, what did you tell him? And I'm all like, well, what do you mean, what did I tell him? He's all, well, he's changed, he's not the same person. Uh, I said, oh, really? Uh, he goes, yeah, he goes, his roommates are ready to kick him out. Uh, they're kicking him out of the house. They're tired of hearing about Jesus and forgiveness. And then about a week after that, I hear from the manager again, and he's coming down. He goes, hey, Raphael, um, I just uh, thought you should know. I just came back uh, from his funeral. Uh, you know, he just died, and we just buried him um, the other day. And I thought to myself, I said, how great is God? You know, this man suffered for 20, 25 years, 
and he carried these burdens until he confessed him as Lord and Savior because he wanted to, to save this man. And then that day in the bathroom, he was saved and God called him home 10 days later. What can you say? <laughs>